So epidemiology, um, as was previously defined, is a study of a disease distribution by looking at how frequently diseases or health conditions appear in which pattern. So a frequency measure is a very basic unit in any epidemiologic studies. So frequency is in general defined as a number of observations within an interval or group, and this frequency is extensively used in epidemiology. So what would an epidemiologist do with frequency information? First, um, they would count the cases or health events under investigation and describe them by time, place, and person. And usually, these counts are divided by an appropriate denominator for further comparisons. So the measure of frequency starts with counting the number of individuals who meet the case definition. So the count is the simplest and most basic representation of magnitude of disease occurrence. And there are a number of ways to summarize the count data, such as frequency table or histogram, which we already know how to create them. And after counting is done, then sometimes the count is divided by an appropriate denominator, depending upon the purpose. So when the count is divided by the total sum, um, then we have a proportion. So in proportion, the part goes to the numerator and the whole goes to the denominator. And in other words, the numerator is the uh, subset of the denominator and proportion does not have dimension because the units in numerator and the denominator are supposed to be the same. And then when they are the same, they cancel each other out because this is um, division. So since the numerator is never bigger than the denominator, the value of proportion ranges from zero to one. And this value is independent of time change. So there's no time information uh, implied in proportion. Now the ratio is another value. Um, you can calculate by dividing two numbers each other. But this is different from the proportion in that the numerator is not necessarily a subset of the denominator. So the value can range from zero to positive infinity. And as with the proportion, this value does not change with time or does not imply any you know, time information. And in the context of epi epidemiology, odds are commonly used statistics that is calculated as the ratio between the number of cases uh, who have a certain condition or disease and the number of people who don't have the condition given an exposure to a risk factor. So basically, this is a measure of likelihood of a particular disease or condition. And finally, we have rate, and this is another value that can be uh, calculated by dividing numbers, but it contains time information. So the rate is defined as the number of events per population where events are counted over a specified time uh, intervals. And so from the epidemiologic sense, the rate is the number of cases um, which goes to the numerator and divided by uh, the sum of follow up time contributed by the people at risk of the event. So um, we will come back to this uh, quantity later when we study a uh, cohort study design. And all these values, including proportion and ratio, um, they frequently um, rescaled by multiplying a constant usually any multipliers of a tens, such as 10, 100,000, or 10,000, to make the quantity um, as close to the whole number to make it easier to understand. Okay, so to make sure that we know how to calculate um, in each of these quantities, let's go over some simple calculation examples. So, um, in a class with 60 girls and 40 boys,
uh, what is the proportion of girls and boys or the ratio of girls um, to boys or vice versa. So the numbers um, here are given as counts, right? The 60 and 40, they are counts of, you know, girls and boys, which is basically the absolute frequency, right? So the proportion of girls in the class is the number of girls in the class over the total um, size of the class, which is 100, right? 60 plus 40 becomes 100, so that is 0.6 or 60%. Uh, or 60% 60, 60 by just multiplying 100. And the proportion of a boys in the class is 40 over 100. So 0.4 or 40%, right? So the ratio of girls to boys, so this is 60 over 40. That's two, three, three over two, one point five. So there are um, you know one point five times more girls um, to boys, and then the ratio of boys to girls is just a flipping ratio. So that's forty over sixty, it's two over three. That is. So it's just repeating six, 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 six. We can just say that in a point uh, six, seven um, by just rounding up. And then here's another question. So the number of females who attended the eye clinic last month was 179 out of total visits of 341. So in this case, um, what is the proportion of males? So because the males, um, the count is not provided, we have to calculate it from what we have. So that's numerator. We need to um, put the, uh, the male counts, which is 341 minus 179. And this should be divided by 341. So the numerator becomes what? Um, Hundred and sixty-two over three forty-one. Right. So I think we need a calculator. So that's sixty-two over three forty-one. Okay. So that's forty-seven. percent right oh there it go yep that is um and then female to male ratio now that is 179 over 162 and so that should be one seven nine over so that's 1.1. 1. 1. In 1, 4, right? Um, no, 1 point, just 1, sorry. Um, 1 point. Okay, so that is the female to male ratio. Now that we have looked at basic quantities used in epidemiology, let's talk about how the size or magnitude of a disease are represented in a population. So one of the most frequently used frequency measures in epidemiology is morbidity, which means a disease state, disability, or negative health outcomes. And usually measures of morbidity are characterized by the two numbers, prevalence and incidence 
And these two numbers provide big picture information about a disease, framing public health questions, policies, patient management, and guiding resource allocation. So the prevalence is a key concept in epidemiology, which is defined as the measure of how many people have a disease in a population at a given time. So this is usually stated as a percentage of the total number of people in the population under the study. So typically, um, it is measured with cross-sectional survey and usually reported with a number of other geographic and demographic information. So the calculation of a prevalence is quite simple. You just divide a number of cases by the number of population to which the cases belong. So then um, you either multiply 100 to make it percentage or other powers of 10 base. So in epidemiology, a case is a person with a disease such as cataract or a health problem such as obesity or a condition such as myopia. So prevalence does not necessarily have to be the measure of disease. We can also use prevalence to assess the frequency of certain behaviors or characteristics that may be risk factors for disease. So for example, uh, smoking uh, is not, you know, disease is not a disease per se, but it is a risk factor for many diseases. However, it is uh, relevant to assess the prevalence of the, uh, of the uh, prevalence of this behavior. And because the definition of a case can be different in different studies, given the same disease, it is very important to clearly define what a case is. So to take cataract as an example, a case may be defined as age-related cataract or as congenital cataract, depending upon um, the kind of population the study is interested in. Um, in prevalence, the numerator is a part of the denominator, so prevalence is a proportion. And prevalence is a static measure providing a snapshot of a disease in a population. So as a real example of prevalence calculation, um, in 1980, the Framingham Eye Study, which was a part of the mega longitudinal cohort study on heart diseases in America, examined 2,477 subjects for cataracts and found that 310 had the cataract. So um, the prevalence for this population was 310 over 2,477, which is at 0.125. So this can conveniently be expressed as 125, 100, 125 cases per thousand or 12.5%. So the numerator conceivably could include people who had first developed cataracts prior to 1980 and people who developed cataracts during 90, uh, 1980 just before their exam was done. So um, please note that the all people counted in the numerator are also included in the denominator. In other words, the numerator is a subset of the denominator, making the um, prevalence a proportion. So here is another example taken from the real study in 2003. And the example goes um, in a national survey of blindness in Bangladesh. A sample of 11,624 individuals aged over 30 years old were examined, and among them, 162 were found to have presenting visual acuities worse than 3 over 60. So for this um, population, um, you want to calculate the prevalence of blindness. And so um, what seems to be missing in this example is that the uh, criteria for blindness, um, but it is kind of uh, implied um, in the question in that uh, in the visual acuity worse than 3 over 60. Uh, 
is uh, indeed the criterion. If you remember the uh, table from the ICD-10, right, the Inter uh, International Classification of Disease, um, this uh, was the criterion for the uh, blindness by uh, the World Health Organization. So the uh, calculation is it's just simply the number of people who meet the criterion, which is 162, right? So that's just 162 over the population, right? So that is in <clears throat> right, so that's only about 1.4%, right? So the prevalence of blindness is 1.4% for this adult population. So another important measures of um, disease in epidemiology is incidence. Um, incidence is defined as a measure of the occurrence of new cases of disease during a specified period of time. So incidence can be expressed in two different ways, um, as a proportion or rate. Um, but here I will only introduce the incidence proportion uh, because incidence rate is typically uh, measured in a cohort study design, which we will talk about it in more detail uh, when the time comes. And it is typically said that incidents provide information about dynamics of a disease, like in motion picture, you know, how um, quickly a disease uh, comes and goes, uh, whereas prevalence provide a static portrait uh, or the snapshot of the disease. So um, the incidence proportion can be thought of as the probability of developing disease over a stated period of time. So as such, um, it is also known as an estimate of risk, or sometimes it is called cumulative incidence. So in order to interpret risk, it is necessary to know the length of time that applies for example, a 2% risk of a certain disease can have a very different meaning uh, if it is over the next 12 months or the next 10 years. So if we look at the equation to calculate incidence um, in the numerator, we only include new cases arisen during the specified period of time, which is different from the prevalence numerator, where it includes the pre-existing cases too, as well as new cases. The denominator of incidence is the total number of disease-free people at risk identified at the beginning of the study. So in the ideal universe, um, if we were to estimate incidence in both incidence proportion or incidence rate, we would want to measure this in a sample of people who are truly at risk of developing the outcome of interest. So in measuring incidence, we would like to exclude anyone who was not at risk of developing disease because they already had the disease or because they couldn't develop the disease. For example, um, if we want to estimate the risk of developing prostate cancer in men, then we obviously would like to exclude women because of the obvious reason. So there are several key differences between the prevalence and incidence. First, the value goes to the numerator in each case is different. In case of prevalence, all cases present during a defined time period go to the numerator, whereas only the new cases uh, in that same period go to uh, the numerator in case of incidence. And secondly, prevalence is often used for chronic disease, whereas incidence usually used for acute diseases. So in acute diseases, such as pinky eye in a primary school, um, let's say, 
uh, incidence measures are more useful because it is a limited but highly contagious condition. Such conditions may be seasonal, so comparison of the current incidence with historical data may establish an epidemic when more cases of pinky eye are found than would normally be expected. But in chronic diseases um, that are not contagious, such as glaucoma, uh, prevalence measures are more useful because it may take a long time for the condition to develop. So the prevalence and incidence are related in such a way that prevalence is a function of both incidence and duration of illness. So for example, high prevalence of a disease within a population might reflect high incidence or prolonged survival without cure or both. Um, on the other hand, low prevalence might indicate low incidence, uh, a rapidly fatal process, or rapid recovery. 